What is up, everybody? This is Podcast Gameoverse episode 052 for Saturday, November 28th. I am Wasabi Ice Cream, joined, as always, by Rick. What's up? Yo, yo. What is up? What is up? I am excited, dude. We got a lot of stuff to go over. Not really, but you know, the Golden Joystick Awards happened, so we have some opinions on that. Uh, we have quite a bit to go over today regarding the Golden Joystick Awards, but in the meantime, what have you been playing with Um, I uh, finished Bug Snacks. Oh, yeah? Did, uh, did it live up to everything you expected? No, not really, but you know what? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great game. The game's great. Yeah? I don't have much else. Stand by last <laughs> week. It was worth. It was worth it. Uh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's it's like like I said, I guess last week. It's it's very much a like a Pokemon Snap style game. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, it really just it it gives me what you want out of a Pokemon Snap, while still expanding on what Pokemon Snap was, you know, without being the same exact thing. Which yeah. is which is great because you know they're making a new Pokemon Snap and that game is going to be the same exact thing. So yeah, I was about to say like if they make that new Pokemon Snap, I know we're going to be comparing that to Bug Snacks when that comes out. Well, probably me because you don't have a Switch, so <laughs> it'll probably be me playing it. Yeah, but uh, it's such a bummer, dude. Especially since, like you see like indie devs like taking these great ideas and expanding on them, but Nintendo. Who used to about the gold standard for int- int- like interesting ideas like aren't really doing that anymore. Yeah, or I mean they're doing it, but at a very very slow pace. Like yeah. still, like Breath of the Wild. Still, I mean we're we're just now seeing the influences of Breath of the Wild because you know it takes a long time to make a game. So, yeah. like uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising is coming out uh, next week and. It's very much a Breath of the Wild game. Uh, you see Genjin Impact. Um, there's a couple indie games in early access still that that are uh, borrowing from that formula. So we're just now seeing the influences of that. So That's true. So, you know, Nintendo can do it when they want to. And yeah. when they do it, fucking they nail it, dude. They nail these great experiences. Yeah. But yeah, Bug Snacks. So yeah, that that was the half of the game. There's a Pokemon Snap half of the game. Then the other half of the game is um all the interesting uh people you meet. They're called the the race of people in the game are called Grumpuses. Grumpuses. Uh, <laughs> Those weird Muppet looking things. Yeah. So uh, the other half of the game is just interacting with all the Grumpuses and interviewing them and uh, trying to figure out what's up with them <laughs> and and they've all got like weird stuff going on and then yeah th- so the end of the game i'm not gonna say what it is but yeah it was uh uh f- ridiculous i'll just say that it's you don't really ridiculous. see it coming yeah it's okay. kind of insane but like at the same time i don't know what i what i heard about it was it was it's you know didn't quite live up to what I heard about it. I expected more, mm. but it was still it was still pretty crazy. So, yeah, that's um, good. The game looks good. I'll, I'll check it out eventually, one day. Yeah, and I didn't one hundred percent it. I there there could possibly be like a an alternate ending if you like get all the uh, bug snacks. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't so. But, well, it still sounds like you had a fun experience with it. You're talking it pretty highly of it last week. Yeah. So I'll definitely, I'll definitely check it out eventually. Maybe when I get a PS5, we'll see. <laughs> I can just get it on PC. It's like it's not expensive. Yeah. Speaking so. of PC, I know I talked about this last week a little bit. My PC is still fucked. I got a new motherboard coming in. Should be in a couple of days. <laughs> At that you, point. You 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 getting that new? Um, you're on Team Red now. You are getting that AMD? No, nah, I'm sticking with Intel because I want to upgrade all my shit, dude. Like, oh yeah, my processor still Intel. My, uh, I don't want to have to upgrade that and change that. I'm just gonna buy a new motherboard. Yeah. Well, if everything dies out, I'll probably just switch to, to AMD. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, that should be coming in a couple days. So hopefully by this time next podcast, I'll have a PC again. Right. Um, 
Anything else you've been playing you want to go over? Um, I think that's it, man. That's all. That's it. That's the only thing. Okay, so hear me out. <laughs> Listen to this. Here we go. I think it's still on sale, so if you're listening and you have a Switch, Resident Evil Revelations 2 is on sale on the Switch eShop for like $8. The game's okay, but raid mode, the multiplayer mode, or the uh, the arcade shooting mode, is a fucking blast. I cannot express how fun raid mode is in Revelations 2. And for $8 to be able to play it on the go, it's definitely worth it. Go pick it up. <laughs> I have a um I have a misprint copy of Revelations 1 on oh, the you 3DS. Do? On 3DS? Oh, you do? 3DS? Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. With the uh, I think they spelled it with an AI instead of an A. Yeah. Or I think it's like missing a letter too. Yeah, something like that. Oh, it's so cool. And I found out that happened. I was like really I was really hoping I'd get a misprint, but I didn't. I'm saying, um, is that worth anything? I haven't looked, so I don't think so. <laughs> There's no one like fucking scrounging around for a copy of that. Like, oh god, I'll pay anything. I just need it. Actually, let's let's look it up. Let's look up how much it costs. Well, the thing with Revelations is that like it it came out in the 3ds when the 3ds was like selling like shit. Yeah. So nobody really bought it anyway. Yeah, but and... there's people who just like who just want stuff like that, who just want like rare stuff. Uh, let me see. So on eBay, the uh, misprint case is going for fourteen fifty. Just the case. The case and the man. Just the case and manual. But uh, unopened copies that are still sealed go for like eight hundred dollars. Nice. Well, I think I opened mine so I could rip. I ripped the. Uh, I dumped the cartridge. I think. I think I opened mine. I'm actually not sure. It might be sealed, but that's interesting. Wait a minute, but this box I'm looking at doesn't have the misprint. All the misprints on the side, that's why I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a sealed, unopened misprint copy goes for like $800. Nice. Pretty good. The. And the uh, actually, so a pre-owned copy with the misprint game included in great and good condition still goes for like sixty. All right, that's pretty good. Pretty good. So that's not bad. That's not bad. Hold on to that. <laughs> there's uh, there's some money to be made there. I guess I guess there is enough. The problem with Revelations again is that it came out in the 3DS, and so people weren't really like buying up that many copies anyway. Yeah. And when the misprint happened, people were specifically buying up the misprints to like sell them. So anyone who wanted a misprint already got one. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I won one uh, in a giveaway. You, so you won it in a giveaway? Yeah. Uh from my friends Nerd Junkies. Nerdjunkies.com. Oh, that was cool of them. Was it specifically they were just giving away copies, or was it like, oh, enter this giveaway to win a misprint revolution? No, it was like they were streaming, and there was a trivia question, and I answered it, right? I mean, I don't think anyone else is playing. It's kind of like racing at a red light where the guy next to you doesn't even know you're racing. So, like, uh. <laughs> so like <laughs> it's not like I had to compete for it, but yeah. Well, that's still cool. I mean, you got that. Yeah. It's worth some money if you want to dump it later. But yeah, Revelations 2 is on Switch, eShop, $8. Go pick it up. It's definitely worth it. Other than that, still playing Pokemon. Um, I did buy, because it's on sale right now, I bought Jedi Fallen Order. And holy shit, that game is phenomenal. I wish I had bought it sooner. I need to play that. It is, it's a lot better. I was worried about the whole Dark Souls thing. I was like, oh, is everyone trying to be Dark Souls now? But no, it does enough different that it feels like a good mash of like Star Wars and Dark Souls. The combat's really fun. Um, the way you use your force powers in combat are very interesting. I really like it. Like you can use your force push to like not just knock enemies over, but bigger enemies. You can stumble them to get a free hit in with your lightsaber. And in a game with like kind of punishing Dark Souls combat, like every hit with your lightsaber really does like count to try to get in. Like it's it's a lot of fun. I was surprised at how much I really liked it, and the platforming puzzles. Oh my god, dude! It reminds me of Prince of Persia. 
Like I, I was, I haven't played a game with like actual platforming puzzles like since Prince of Persia. I'm really impressed with it. Yeah, I heard, I heard about that. I heard it. It kind yeah. of felt like, um, yeah. I like the uh the the main character. I like the actor um from Shameless. Yeah, that's uh, where I knew him from. He's a good actor, and uh, yeah. I wasn't worried about his performance. I knew, like, he's a good actor. He's going to pull off a good performance. I was worried, like, is EA going to make a good Star Wars game? And they did. Yeah. There's enough references to uh, the original trilogy and the Clone Wars I really like. Um, seems like after Star they... Wars nerd. <laughs> seems like after they fucked yeah. up Battlefront 2, uh, they've, they've been, like, they've cleaned up their act, at least when it comes to Star Wars. Uh, like, they, they are not trying to lose that license. Which, like, like this, good. <laughs> this and um the other one, uh, Squadrons. Like, they've, they've been pushing out a lot of free updates for, for Squadrons. That people yeah. Are like, oh, good, good guy EA putting out free updates for that no one asked for, even, <laughs> like... They're putting out free updates for Fallen Order, too. They're releasing a new game plus mode, um, like a battle arena trial mode you can play through. Um, a mode so you can build your own combat encounters and practice against specific combinations of enemies. Like, I'm like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> like, good job trying to redeem yourself. You're, you haven't yeah. completely done it yet, but you're on your way. <laughs> yeah. I still think EA is a piece of shit. We, only, we know they're only doing that, so that doesn't affect their bottom line, but. Oh, of course. Yeah, but Wait, still, like, you know, free shit for us. Uh, but yeah, Jedi Fallen Order is good. It's like twenty five dollars in the PlayStation Store, so go pick it up. If you're even yeah. like a little bit interested in Star Wars, it's definitely worth it. I mean, I'm not, but um, you know, if it's a good game, it's a good game. It's a really good game. It's is this much I need better to play if you're a Star Wars fan. I need to go back and play Sekiro as well. That's another one. Everyone keeps telling me Sekiro is really good. I need to play that too. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not I'm not a Star Wars fan at all. But you know, if it's a good game, then I I, it's I hear it's pretty good. Star Wars is good. I'm sad. I'm, I feel bad for you. you can't Star Wars is okay. It. Wars, like, it's all right. You're wrong. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's okay. Our podcast. You know it's great. Star Wars. <laughs> No, jokes yeah. aside, um, jokes aside, uh, it is a good game. Um, if you don't, if, if you're not like a huge Star Wars fan, it's still fun because it's, it's still a good game with good game design. Um, the levels are interesting, the puzzles are interesting. Uh, the platforming again, if you play Prince of Persia, it's very similar. Like, I was getting mad Prince of Persia vibes from it, which is a good thing. I love Prince of Persia. So it gets my recommendation. As a Star Wars fan or not, it's it's really good to check out. But that is all I've been playing. All right. Yeah, pretty slow week. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah. It's a holiday week, so. People, people I mean, if you guys know easy. any, like, good Black Friday. Yeah, there, there's a couple good Black Friday deals out there. Uh, PlayStation is having... Uh, Black Friday deal on their uh, their eShop or their digital shop, and so is Nintendo. I think they're still good for the next couple of days. So check those out. I got Star Wars all in order. Man, um, speaking of Black Friday, I hate this time of year when it comes to emails. Um, yeah, you're telling me you're deleting like hundreds of Black Friday emails. Hundreds of emails, man. Just a Black Friday. And like some of them were just like repeat offenders. Like Newegg sent at least a thousand on their own. Like Dude, just from yeah, New Egg. Newegg. I got so many from New Egg. Jesus Christ, man. Um I it's... thought it would be like brick and mortar stores like Best Buy or Target or GameStop, but no, dude, New Egg. Yeah. So bad with the Black Friday. Well, because they have like a different sale like every day or every couple hours. Yeah. So they're like, Oh, here's this new deal we're doing. Here's a new sale we're doing. And it's like, dude, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like if I actually care about Black Friday, I'm already there. So you don't yeah. have to you don't have to fucking <laughs> like if you're really craving some deals, you you're already gonna be hounding the site and every other site. Exactly. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a hundred tabs open with every site you shop on looking for those deals. So 
Exactly. So that was fucking annoying. So I know exactly where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Um. But if you're not into physical merchandise, again, most of those digital storefronts, PlayStation Store, Xbox Store, Steam is having their their autumn sale right now, which isn't technically a Black Friday sale, but it's a holiday sale still, right? Like, there's no argument there. Yeah. So check those out. There's some pretty good games on sale. I think everyone should check them out. You know, add some stuff to your your backlog or you know, get some gifts for friends. If anyone's asking, I do have the uh, Borderlands season pass on my wish list. If anyone wants to pick that up for me. Gross. Just kidding. Just kidding. I can buy my own shit. What do you mean gross? Borderlands it's Borderlands is a fun game, dude. Just because you had like <laughs> you picked a shit tier character it doesn't mean Borderlands is a bad game. <laughs> it's okay. But you know, it's still Borderlands and that's a <laughs> bummer. <laughs> Uh, We have quite a bit to go over. Well, not too much, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing that happened this week was the uh, the Golden Joystick Awards. They finally announced some of their games. And, I mean, we're not surprised, right? Like, <laughs> are we really surprised uh, that Last of Us took most of these awards? Well, okay, so here's the thing about the golden joysticks, which I don't, I guess people just don't understand is that these are completely voted by the people. Yeah. They don't, they don't, no one touches this except what's voted on. So, um, the last of us two won best storytelling, best visual design, best audio, uh, naughty dog got studio of the year. Uh, PlayStation Game of the Year and Ultimate Game of the Year. Okay, um, so it's not like the Game Awards with Jeff Keighley, where it's voted on by a panel of judges. This is the Golden is Joystick all, Awards. Golden Joystick oh. is all people. It's all user vote. Okay. So when I see people fucking in the comments like, dude, it's just rigged. Fucking, where's Ghost of Tsushima? Not even gotten a single award. Um, I'm like, well, dude, if you're like so upset, you should have voted for it, right? That's on you. Um, if anything, this just goes to show where the people stand in terms of, uh, you know, how we feel about these games, uh, or how, like how the people feel about these games. Yeah, I hear you. And that's to say like, not all of them are user voted. Like there's a couple that are voted by a uh, judges, a judging panel. Yeah. But those awards, you can count on one hand, the outstanding contribution award, the breakthrough award, the lifetime achievement award, the critics choice award and best performer, literally five awards. You can count on one hand, everything else, game of the year, game community, family game, get best game expansion, best indie game. All of it is user voted. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so like you were saying, you know, you know, um, yeah, a couple surprises I saw here. Uh, Fall Guys, best multiplayer game. See, um, that surprises me too, especially since like the multiplayer hype kind of fell off of it. Yeah, and I would argue that Fortnite and uh, the new Call of Duty Warzone are probably pushing out bigger numbers than Fall Guys. So it surprises me to see that. Yeah. But the people like what the people like, man. So And um mobile game of the year, Lego Builders Journey. So that one surprised me. I've never fucking heard of this. Don't game. even know what the <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh granted, I don't play a lot of mobile games, but I would I, I figure I would have at least heard of like, I don't know, a Genshin Impact could have been in there. Uh oh, it's a know. Lego puzzle game. Oh, interesting. That actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> like, I would play that. I mean, yeah, um, I kind of want to check it out now, but <laughs> um, eSports Game of the Year, Modern Warfare. Which, I mean... Uh, I, when uh, you think about eSports, I don't think of Call of Duty anymore. Yeah, I think of like League of Legends or like Heroes of the Storm. But that didn't come out this year, so I could see why they weren't 
nominated. So I'm trying. I'm arguing to think like what came out this year. Yeah. Like a bit that esports net niche, and I I can't think of anything. Um, so I guess they that kind of won by default. <laughs> maybe I I don't know what the nominations were. That's that's the other thing. Maybe it'll tell. Yeah, us I couldn't find them either. No. Um. Here's a huge upset. Best performer, Sandra Sad Kamala Khan. Yes, I did see that, and I'm like, really? We're gonna we're gonna pick that over like, um. Like Last of Us Two came out this year, man. Come on. A lot of things came out this year that were not Marvel's Avengers. Um, I mean, of all the good things, the few good things of that game, Kamala Khan is one of them. But <laughs> that's that's a surprise. Uh, that's probably the biggest surprise here to me. Yeah, it's. I was surprised when I saw that, especially like. If you click on that, where to go? Uh, yeah, if you click on that, you can see the nomination. So the other nominations were, um, oh, never mind. I thought you can click on the award and it'll take you to the nominations. I guess not. Yeah, just say, told you who won. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, she was definitely the best thing about that game, but come on, dude. Like, <laughs> And Ashley Johnston fucking pushed that shit out. I mean, even Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey was in that game. Uh, she wasn't that great in that game, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's surprising. That's surprising. Yeah, that that's one that caught me off guard too. I'm like, really? Over Ashley Johnston? I think the people fucked up on this one. Um, Best indie game, Hades still got best indie game, so I'm not surprised at that. I mean, that's yeah. getting a lot of attention since it came out. Um, best gaming community is still Minecraft, and I'm like, I'm not surprised by that because every other gaming community tells me to kill myself or calls me a racial slur. <laughs> it hasn't happened in Minecraft yet, so. <laughs> oh, actually, Animal Crossing New Horizons is on the list too, so I'm like, that that could have been a pretty big contender for Minecraft. Yeah, well, especially for uh, wait, where where did like that user win? created contest, like user oh. created content? Yeah, no, yeah, and no, because like, yeah, there's a lot of user created content in that game, but um, Nintendo was just bad at presenting that stuff. Yeah, so. you have to like download the app and get like a QR code, scan on your yeah. phone, sync your phone yeah. to your Switch. There's not like there should be an option in the Switch shop to like look at user created content. No, it should just be you walk into the clothing store and then there's a section where it's the just whatever the game generates and there's a section where you browse like just random user created stuff or you know like curated stuff like you should be able to submit your shit and then there should be like a panel of judges that goes in and just says, "Yeah, accept that, accept that, accept that." Um and then it should just be input into your game just seamlessly. Yeah, uh, I know. agree. But uh, you know, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't. I haven't played Animal Crossing, so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know what you mean, though. I agree with that. There should be an, an easier way to do it. Um, Breakthrough Award Among Us got Breakthrough Award, which I'm not again not surprised by that. The story for that game is insane. You yeah. Know? yeah. Like, it came out 2016. It got some attention, but then it blew up this year. Like for Thanksgiving dinner, my cousins, we finished eating. My cousins got, got into a corner and started playing among us, like on their phones. So like that, that game is got so much attention this year, which is cool to see, man. I like, I like hearing comeback stories like that. Good for them. Uh, and it's good to see, uh, it being recognized by the people. Uh, best gaming hardware was NVIDIA GeForce 3080, which isn't even out yet. Yeah, when you that's compare out. it, that well, is out. Okay, it is out. Yeah, it's out. But um, you know, it's sold out, but it's out. Yeah, and I guess comparing it to like, because I can see the nominations on this one. There's things like the PC Engine Mini, like who bought that? Gross. <laughs> the Oculus Quest Two. The Razer Kishi mobile pad for xCloud. Like, yeah, like if you, if you line up what, <laughs> what the competition was, it's not that surprising. 
Um, I don't know. Do you want to go over all of these or just a couple no. like standouts? No, I, I will say so. Like the users chose The Last of Us Two for Game of the Year, but you can see the critics' choice above that, and it's Hades. Um, which so we, we means... discussed that a little bit. Like that was your Game of the Year, right? When we talked about this at the Game Awards last week. For hey, uh, for Game of the Year, uh, hard to say. Hard to say. Hades, I, it's fantastic. Game of the Year is tough, man. Game of the Year is tough, right? I mean, uh, The Last of Us 2, I, I keep saying about The Last of Us 2, it is a game where its components vastly outweigh everything else. Um, But I think that the entire game might be less than the sum of its components, if that makes any sense. Now, I hear what you mean. Just because like you put a bunch of good ingredients together you can still fuck up you know yeah i don't know i don't have an analogy for that but (laughs) i mean just because like you have a bunch of good ingredients together doesn't mean that you can i don't know i don't have an. i was going somewhere with that but i can't come up with anything but i see what you mean um it is definitely a game that sticks with you but it's not the kind of game at first it's not the kind of game you're gonna play twice like, once you're done with yeah. it, you're done with it, you know? Like there's really no reason to go back unless you want to hunt down those extra collectibles. Or but that's how, get... that's how I played the, the first game. Like, I played that once, and I was done. Like, I got the story I wanted, yeah. and then it wrapped up, and I was like, that's it. I, I'm satisfied. Uh, so, I, I don't know if, like, replayability is, is like, what I'm looking at. Like, uh, Outer Wilds is a game that you can only play once. Like you cannot play that game twice. Um, but the game won't it, let you play it twice. No, you can. It's just that you're not. It's a completely different experience. After you will understand mm. what I mean when you play it. Okay. But just know that you cannot play it twice. Okay, so, uh, um, I, I don't think replayability is like the thing that I would uh way too heavily here um but yeah i don't know hades hades i have to play more because it's not i I don't love those kinds of games like i said like when when the binding of isaac like rogue like rogue like like games like that uh i don't typically fall in love with uh very quickly like it takes me a while to kind of I, I have the opposite problem. I fall in love with them pretty quickly, but my shelf life on them is expires very quickly. Yeah. Like it's really easy for me to hit that hit a wall and then get bored with it after I hit that wall. Um yeah. but I think like the big thing with Last of Us, it's it's a weird thing to say because like people are touting it like game of the decade, and I don't think I agree with that. No. It's a good not game. That's out of what. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> <laughs> It's a good game, but if we look at other than story wise, like what did it do differently from the first Last of Us? Like really, like what makes it better than the first Last of Us? It it vastly um, improved that combat. Like the combat in that game was just fun. Like I enjoyed playing that game more than the Last of Us one. I did not enjoy playing. Like that was one of the main reasons why I never went back to it because I was like, mm. I really like the story here, but I don't want to play this ever again. <laughs> Whereas the last mm. of us two, I actually did go back and like play a little bit more of it. Um, just to kind of like switch up the tactics a little bit, kind of play it differently, more aggressively. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, again, it was still like fun to play. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. It's, it's going to yeah, be, it's, it's this this game of the year session is going to be a toss up between The Last of Us and Hades, I think. For yeah, I think so too. I think so too, especially since like if we think about what else came out this year, I mean, Ghost of Tsushima came out, but that's not getting too much attention now. Even the multiplayer, like it should yeah, be. They added, so. yeah, it didn't add that much to the the game's real attention here. I talk a lot of shit um, about Tsushima, but it's it's a great game. Just it's not like. Again, that game didn't revolution. If that game like affected yeah. you in any, uh, you know, if that game really touched your soul, I'm not going to take that away from you. But like, I don't know. Have you ever played an Assassin's Creed game or 
you know, Shadow of Mordor or, uh, you know, any of these games that that game is just a copy of. Uh, like, never mind the story that's in that game. I thought the story in that game was completely boring. Like, I didn't care for the main character at all. There's a lot of side stories that are, like, spread throughout uh, that I enjoyed way better than whatever the main story was in that game. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Tsushima, there's a lot of people upset that Tsushima got no placement here. And I'm like, uh, shouldn't have. So, <laughs> like, I'm surprised <laughs> it's even in the Game Awards at all because it's just not, like, it's just in there by default because whatever. It's a Sony game and people just go head over heels for that shit. When Sony makes a Ubisoft game, everyone all of, all of a sudden loves Ubisoft games. But when Ubisoft <laughs> does it, it's like, oh, how this sucks, dude. Fucking they're making another one of these. It sucks. But when Sony makes the same game, fucking it's the next generation of fucking ultimate game. I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, I know what you mean. And uh, from from seeing it, like, even watching the gameplay, I'm like, what does this do differently from, like, if you said Assassin's Creed in Japan, this would be the same game. Yeah, it's basically what it is. I mean, it, it has, it nails an aesthetic, and I love it for that. But other than that, it's just, it doesn't do much for me. Exactly. And does an aesthetic, like, make a whole game, though? Like, no. Not for me, at least, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, those yeah. are some of the uh, the Golden Joystick Award winners. I mean, you might agree, you might disagree. You know, if there's anything that you think got snubbed, man, let us know in the comments. You know, tell us what, what you think deserved to win Game of the Year or Best Storytelling or Best Multiplayer Game. Um, oh, big surprise, Nintendo Game of the Year, Animal Crossing. <laughs> Forgot to mention yeah. that. Um, PC Game of the Year was Death Stranding, which... Really? <laughs> Half Life Alex came out this year. I mean, okay, if we're yeah, if we're, if we're uh, uh, no, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say uh, Outer Wilds, but that, that only came out on Steam this year, not like PC as a whole. But dude, yeah. like Half Life Alex came out this year. Uh, Flight Microsoft Flight Simulator finally came out this year. Yeah. Uh, Hades is playable on PC. It, it came to Steam this year. Like, well, it was in early really? access since last year, though. So they might be, there might be some cutoff on that. But still, like, really? Um, uh, yeah that that's a that's a weird one. Um, it's super weird. I mean, I, I get like, there's Rise a lot, Dawn lot. Of, exactly, that came out on on Steam this year trash, too. Though, so. so. So here's what weirds me out. Like, what did Death Stranding do on PC that made it PC Game of the Year? Like, did it really improve that much over the console release? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did it really? It did really. Okay, then. So maybe that's it. Maybe just I mean, just the pure like transition from console to PC, like that alone, should be worth like. But so did work. like if we're just talking the technical uh, aspects, Horizon Zero Dawn probably did more. Yeah, it had it. Horizon. Horizon had a rough launch, but they've been cleaning it up. So yeah, I don't know. Again, these are user voted, so you got to take that into account. You got to take the users into account of what like, uh, what what they would be thinking. Yeah, uh, like the general. Maybe population. it's more recent. Maybe that's why it's more recent, still fresh in people's minds. But eh, whatever. Um. Also, like Crusader Kings three came out this year. That's another game that was whatever. I'm... No one cares about that. Are you kidding? <laughs> it was enough that people were excited for it. It was a pretty big release at this year, I'd say. And for the fact that nobody like talked about it is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, um, most wanted game, God of War Ragnarok. I would accurate. It's probably oh, the really? only game. SM... SMT five. Come on. No one fucking gives a shit about that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. It's just me. But um, I mean, if we're really talking beyond good and evil easily <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I mean, a lot of games are coming out, too. Like we have uh, Final Fantasy Sega. 7 Remake 2, um, Final Fantasy 15, no, 16. 
Like I would argue yeah. I'm more excited for Final Fantasy 16 than God of War Ragnarok. But oh, that's then just you, me. did you play God of War? I tried. I, I we had this conversation. I couldn't get into the combat. It's too close oh, to his back. Man, man. it's not. I, I'll go back to it and try again. Everyone keeps telling me like it gets really good later once yeah. you unlock some more abilities and you get used to the fucking camera that's in your asshole. But that's probably really my game of the generation. If I had to like, I it'd really, be a toss up. it'd be a toss up. Maybe it'd be my second. It'd be my runner up because Outer Wilds is like all time, all time for me. But uh, yeah, that would be a runner up though. Really? Um, which is crazy because you don't, you don't, you think God of War, and you you don't think that. I'm just—it's just super impressive what they did with that character. Uh, they completely just made it something that you care about instead of just hack and slash. Oh, titties! I'm gonna fuck this chick and I'm gonna rip this Minotaur's head off and shit like that. Like it's way more now. I'll give you that. That's one thing that surprised me about it is that it's much more. Um, it was able to bring like an actual like emotion and care to a character that didn't have that originally. Yeah. And it almost like recontextualizes like the older God of War games too. Not a lot, but almost. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that. That's one thing I like about it. I'll have to go back and replay it. Maybe I just like I see give it more time to really get into it, but we'll see. It it mixes up the combat a lot, man. There's like once you start like upgrading your stuff, there's so many different combat options that it really expands out to like there's a bunch of shield stuff, there's a bunch of like bare fist stuff. And you can switch between all this like dynamically. Like if you throw your axe, you switch up to your like shield combat or your like fist combat. It's like it's it's real dynamic in a, in a way that um, it's just real um, real unique. All right, I'll give it a try. I'll have to give another. I'll have to give it a second chance then. Um, while we're on that subject, we're talking about PlayStation games. How's this for a segue? PlayStation yeah. Plus had their new free games announced for December. Uh, we got Worms Rumble, which, really? <laughs> like, I didn't know this was coming out. Uh, have uh, you seen Worms Rumble yet? No, I didn't. People are, uh, people fuck with the worms, man. I'm, yeah, you people know, fuck with worms hard. Like, I, I was never, like, a huge Worms fan, but I can see the appeal of it. Yeah. Also, I think I've never played a, an actual Worms game. I've only played, like, spinoffs. Not spinoffs, but, like, copycat Worm games, like, on New It and on Newgrounds and stuff when I was, like, a kid. Yeah. That's as far as my experience goes, but it just seems uh, kind of weird because Worms Rumble isn't, like, a normal Worms game. For those of you who don't know, Worms is, like, a turn-based strategy side-scrolling game. But the gimmick is when you move care, you physically move characters, and you take your shots manually, kind of like Valkyria Chronicles, but like in two D. And it's been like that forever. And this game's like a third person, like it's a third person um, battle royale shooter. So oh, okay, it's, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, weird. if you've seen the trailer too. Yeah, super weird. Super weird. Oh, you know what this is like, like? This is like if you've ever played Soul Dat. Uh, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, really old, really old PC game. It actually just recently uh, relaunched. Uh, but Soul Dat was a... Um, it's this game, basically. Uh, side-scrolling... Uh, Free for all shooter where you like you're jumping and platforming and shooting. And um yeah, that's basically this, but they put worms on it. Uh Worms Rumble isn't side scrolling, is it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it is. Unless I was looking at the wrong fucking trailer. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean that's what it looks like from this trailer, but uh yeah, this is sold at, dude. There's no one in the chat who remembers Soldat. Do I got to pull up some Soldat footage? Oh shit, it is 2D. I thought it was like a 3D shooter. Okay, this might actually be pretty cool. It's not too different from what Worms is doing. 
I've never heard of this. What you say? It's called Soldat. Soldat. S O L D A T. Um. Yeah, it was a, it was like a free to play. It's on Steam now. But you know, it it looks like Worms too. Like it it um. But it, it it's basically like a uh like a. It's basically that. What that was is what Soldat was. Oh shit! Yeah, that's a lot. What this is? Wow. Okay. It's a lot. You know that Worms game looks a lot faster paced, but you know same formula. It seems like. Okay, so now now that I see the context here, this might be pretty cool to check out. Yeah. Um, we also have Just Cause Four coming out. Just Cause, I don't know why. Um. I mean, if you if you play just cause, there's never really nothing to talk about with that. <laughs> um, Rocket Arena. That's what I really wanted to talk about because we we yeah. were talking. You like this game? I like. You it. bought it when it was like thirty bucks on Steam, right? Yeah. Now it's probably like I don't know a dollar, probably. <laughs> like with the because they dropped it down to five dollars. Then now that that sale's going on, so I don't know how much it is now, but it's probably very cheap. Uh, this game's not a bad game. It's just wrong. They they had a bad pricing model. Uh, coupled with the fact that you know it had microtransactions and all this stuff, it just they really killed the. They they limited the already limited uh, appeal of it by, you know, charging for it just out the gate. It should have been free to play. So this is good. Where it's going to be on PlayStation Plus. Mm-hmm. And the game is cross platform, so um, you know, there's already gonna be whoever already has it uh across all yeah, platforms. There's an install base there. Yeah, there's already an install base. So I'm hoping this just brings new life. I mean, this game should have launched like this to begin with. It should have been like, you know, the Rocket Arena or yeah, Rocket Rocket, Rocket League. League. Yeah, it should have been the Rocket League type of launch where it launched in PlayStation Plus for free. Because I think that's what would have brought. I like how everyone's using that tactic now. Uh, Fall Guys did it and Destruction All-Stars is going to do it. Um, it's a proven proven tactic. I mean, it works. So, Not just uh, that, but by doing that, you know, Sony foots the bill to release the game. So you already have like, here's a guaranteed like, here's a guaranteed income yeah the day the game drops so you know there's there's not a lot of risk involved with it yeah especially if it's like a like a smaller game like this i think it could breathe new life into the game and from what i've seen of it it does look like a lot of fun from what i've seen you play and but the problem is the install base isn't there it's been dropping off like every day uh, so hopefully this will like be enough to breathe some new life into the game give it the rocket league treatment and hopefully this becomes like the next big like you know game to stream um i would like to see that it looks like fun i would see i would like to see that the game is still five dollars on steam there's no discount Mm -hmm. um and there are 27 people playing now (laughs) oh god (laughs) and it peaked at 31 was the peak so i said there we go hopefully this will do it man yeah, still, uh, we'll turn that game around. It does again. This is only counting Steam numbers and it is cross platform, so yeah. But that is not a good look. <laughs> it is not a good look at all. So we'll see when it drops on PlayStation Plus. I'll pick it up for sure. It sounds like fun. Yeah, and I might you pick know it up, I might load it, it back up. See what see what it's um changed. Yeah, how many people are on there? Yeah, I know the added uh, characters. I'll... Yep. All games will be available to play on Tuesday, December 1st until Monday, January 4th. So get to it December 1st. Um, Games with Gold has some games coming out too. Uh, The Raven Remastered, which we've never played, is like a point-and-click adventure, whodunit, murder mystery game. Um, That game isn't expensive. I think it's normally like 20 bucks, 5 bucks on Steam right now for the remastered version. Uh, but it is free on Xbox One starting December 1st to the 31st. Uh, then we have Bleed 2 coming on Xbox One, which is like a Hotline Miami-style 2D 
shooter game, but the big gimmick is you have these, like, how can I word it? You have these, like, bullet time mechanics almost, and dodge roll slides, kind of like Katana Zero, but with guns. It's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, Bleed is very good. Very good game. Yeah, um, I haven't played the first Bleed, but it's on my list. Uh, that honestly, that game sounds like it's right up my alley. Um, Saints Row Get Out of Hell is coming out on the 360 between December 1st and the 15th, which I like Saints Row. Get Out of Hell is a fun experience, albeit a very short experience. It's, it's designed as like a standalone expansion for Saints Row 4. So you know, go ahead and check it out. It's fun. It's free. Uh, then we have stacking coming out on the 360 between December 16th and the 31st. I don't know anything about stacking. So stacking, that's that game's old as fuck. So I played that yeah. game on PS3. Um, it, that is a double fine joint. Um, it's like a uh, adventure puzzle game. You're you're running mm-hmm. around. You're like a Russian, uh, uh, like nesting doll, and. Mm. The whole premise is like you you nest inside of uh, other NPCs to kind of solve puzzles around the world to like get un- get through get past other objectives in the world by you know disguising yourself as another NPC. Um, it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm watching the uh, <laughs> video of it. And it looks really neat. Like Double yeah. Fine always makes these like really interesting games. And yeah, it looks really interesting. Okay, that'd be cool to check out. Yeah, I like it. So you know, not, um, not any blockbusters here, uh, mm-hmm. but I mean, from both both sides, are kind of weak this month. But you know, there's yeah, there's good he, stuff. There's there's fun to be had. Yeah, nothing, nothing's bad. There's nothing out here where I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like, they're all pretty pretty good games. You know, yeah. no, nothing nothing controversial here. Um, And some quickies. We have The World Ends With You. A new World Ends With You guy announced. Uh, the World Ends With You, I think it's called The World Ends With You. Neo? No, Neo, The World Ends With You. Yeah. Um, this, uh, Which looks crazy. <laughs> it looks good. It looks like these games. It looks like uh, it looks d- deeper than it probably really is. I will say that. Um, it, it reminds me of uh, Sharp Fe, uh, the Final Fire Emblem Soul Persona game. Yeah, there's a reason for that because the game deals a lot with like Japanese. Um, like style and fashion yeah as well as like what's popular and um what's that like big crossroads in middle tokyo shibuya yeah a lot along with like shibuya culture so that's why they're very similar they're they're coming from the same like inspirational source the best way to look at it yeah yeah not in terms of like uh not in terms of like the combat just like the style of it now, here's the thing. I love the style for World Ends With You. Yeah. I've wanted to play the first one, but I can't find a good way to play that fucking game, dude. I, so, it's on Switch. Yeah, but it plays like dog shit, dude. Does it? <laughs> yeah, so here's the only way to play it, dude. So the game is designed around... So on the DS, you have two screens. And you have two characters you play as, okay? Yeah. Um you use the face buttons to control one character on the top screen and you use the, uh, the touch screen to control the character on the bottom. And from what I've seen of it, it looks like it works really well. It controls pretty well. On the Switch, though, you're playing... Sh- it's a port of the iOS version, which only works on a touch screen. Now, the oh. touch screen isn't as accurate on a switch than on a ds yeah i would argue because you know you're using your finger i went and bought a stylus to make this game more comfortable and it still plays like shit because you're like like let's do you want to attack there's one move that's like a swipe and that's like a slash attack and if you want to like do an ice like a fire attack you have to like draw not draw but you have to put in the symbol 
that's like a fire attack. You tap to do another attack. And it's really easy for the system to get those confused. And you're like, fuck, I'm shooting when I should be swiping. Or I'm casting a spell when I should be attacking. Or I'm not casting a spell I want to cast. It's And you're, you're moving with it, too. Like, <laughs> So using the, the fucking stylus or the touchscreen to move and attack. I can't explain it, dude. It's so fucking there clumsy. Are, there are, like, DS emulators where you just use your mouse. Uh... You know, just use your mouse and then use your, your keyboard to, like, move. That then might I... be the only way for me to do it, dude. It plays... I bought it on Switch. It plays like shit. Like, I, I'm having such a hard time playing it. And the worst part is, if you try to play it on your TV, good fucking luck. Because instead of <laughs> emulating a touchscreen, you use the Joy-Con to, like, draw it out using motion controls. And that feels even worse, man. Oh, <laughs> uh... It is so bad. It plays like shit. And I've tried. I went and bought a stylus so I can play with this game. I bought a really nice, like, like a really nice, like, uh, like neoprene cloth tip stylus. I bought one of those, like, disc tip styluses to see if that was more accurate. And it just, it plays like shit. I can't get past it. It's, it feels so clunky. It feels so bad. And I've tried. I've given it more than enough time to, to, to try to grab me, and it hasn't. That's unfortunate. Um, well, maybe yeah, maybe the uh, maybe you have better luck on an emulator. I'm I'm probably gonna load this up on an emulator too. Just uh, I, I did have the Switch version, but I never played it. <laughs> I, I got it. Plays it, like play it. it plays uh, like shit. It plays like shit. I've tried, and by default, they expect you to use your finger, and that's impossible. Yeah, that is impossible with the amount of precision it requires. On a DS, it's not so bad because that stylus is pretty precise on the DS. But it just it doesn't feel good on the Switch, dude. Um, yeah. uh, there is Prime. an anime for the first World of, World Ends with You coming out, so I might just watch that to get the story. But ugh, the, the Switch version's rough. Uh, Fry in the chat, uh, Grumble in the chat, guys. We do this live on Twitch.tv slash GameOverse, GameOverse.com slash Twitch, GameOverse.com slash Discord. Jump in there, talk to us. We talk back, uh, harass us. We harass back. Hmm. Um, is the anime for this the story is, is it the same I might just do that if yeah it's, it's the same okay. story well then yeah it's, it hasn't that. come out yet I think it got postponed because of COVID but that's happening how is it okay I thought it was just a thing this game is old as fuck you're telling me that they didn't do an anime yet no the anime is new <laughs> uh, okay great the anime just got announced like last year I think well that's surprising <laughs> Well, the game didn't really, like, sell gangbusters when it came out, you know? But, like, they've been, like, on it, though. It's not like this game was, like, obscure. Like, people know about this game. True, but what attention did it get? It got a, it got the DS version. It got an iOS port later that plays like shit. That should tell you it got a reference. Though. It got a reference in Kingdom Hearts and a That's re-release on the enough. Switch. Like if if it got more than just like it got several ports and a remaster, you're telling me there's no anime for this yet. Yeah, okay. there's no anime yet. Um, they just announced. I was wrong. I didn't announce it last year. They announced it like this year, like four months ago. Like it's it's super recent. I'll put the trailer up in the uh, stream chat right now so you can see. Well, yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to check it out. This game, so this new one, so Neo, Neo, the world ends with you, which is a bad name, I think. Uh, next year, they're saying, at least for Japan. Yeah, and that looks good. And that looks good. Um, it looks like it's being built to play on the Switch using a controller. Um, it kind of yeah. reminds me. The of combat like... looks like Xenoblade. Um, like Xenoblade mixed with um. God damn it. What was that other game? Um, hood? Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, it reminds me of Xenoblade mixed with like the Tales of games a little bit. Like, oh, the way yeah, you're like yeah. juggling enemies. Which, I mean, this this could be cool. This could be cool. And it looks like it's a sequel to the first one because it's got a whole new cast of characters. Yeah. So I'll probably just you know, watch the anime and then go play the game or play the sequel. 
I'll probably just and like the anime watch. looks gorgeous. Like I'm surprised how good the anime looks. They're not just like taking the assets from uh from the game. The no, game like it looks. It like looks... An anime. Yeah, but they're uh, it's a complete anime series. Like they look like the uh, like the character portraits more than the sprites, and it's very heavily stylized, really thick lines. Like, I like the anime. The anime looks really good. So this will be cool to see. Um, I'll definitely watch that and then play this game. <laughs> I'm not... Oh, I can't, dude. I've tried. I've given Switch Port of the first game so many chances, and it plays like shit. I can't do it. Bummer. Bummer with the Switch, yeah. man. Just to... Yeah. Sometimes, you know, um, you just don't do it. Yeah, and that game came out for, like, $40 when it first released. <laughs> Like, I got it for, like, 20 and I still feel ripped off. Um, another news, Square Enix, or on the subject of them, are going to make uh, Work From Home permanent as of December 1st. Yeah. Which, I mean, are we surprised by this? With, with COVID and everything, a lot of people are realizing how much cheaper and easier it is to do some jobs from home. Uh, no, what's surprising is that they're a Japanese company, and the well from what i understand about japanese mindset yeah japanese businesses is that they're very much like workaholics like when it comes to work life balance is more of a work balance than a life balance um so this is like pretty big in terms of like a, a large japanese corporation doing this um because, I mean, they've got, like, a term for, like, when you die from overwork. There's, like, a Japanese term for it. Uh, so, I, you know, I think this is a good, this is a good thing that hopefully sets a precedent. Again, we're talking about setting precedents. Um, this is another one where, like, hopefully this, this trickles down into um, other Japanese corporations to kind of, you know, take a double look at, what they're doing and and how they're conducting their business and yeah just improving the lives of their employees uh now i I, some people enjoy the the whole the hustle bustle of going to work every day you know some people enjoy that so it's not like it's not like this is just a positive positive on everything um you know some people some people enjoy the getting up and going to work but who does that like, here's, here's my logic <laughs> here's my logic my commute to work is my least favorite part of the day and it's because and i work i work i live really close to my work i live like a, maybe a 10 minute drive from work yeah it's super easy um but i gotta get up earlier i gotta get dressed you know make sure i'm ready for work take a shower pack up all my shit you know, I got to pack up my lunch if I made lunch that day, my water bottle to go to work. Uh, there was a point where I was taking a laptop to work, so I was taking that. I had to carry all this shit. It was a pain in the ass. Now I can wait. I don't have to sleep. I don't have to stay in that late. I can stay sleep in like half an hour later, roll out of bed, log into my computer, and I'm working. It's – and then again, there's no commute back home either. Yeah. I spend more time on stuff I actually want to do, like sleeping. And <laughs> I'm like – I can see yeah. it seems it seems weird to me that hustle and bustle to work. That's such a pain in the ass. That's my least favorite part of the work day is driving to work. Yeah. But then, you know, there's other people who who've been doing the, the work from home thing for a while now. And they're like, oh, I'm so sick and tired of it, man. I just want this to be over so I can go back to work. I hate staying home like this. This is so boring or, you know, shit like that, where people were just like, Dude, done. I was like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that. So I worked from home when this whole pandemic started back in March. And then around September, they sent me September, October, they sent me back to the office. When spikes, I don't know if you've been keeping on the news, but uh, when COVID started spiking again, they took us back home. I just got back to working from home about a week or two ago. And that whole time I was in the office, I was like, the whole time, the first time I was working from home, when I did that for a couple months, I was like, fuck, I hate this. I want to go back to the office. I'm sick of being cooped up at home all day. Yeah. And then we had to go back to that that fucking rat race. I was like, oh my god, I'd give anything to work from home again. <laughs> um, yeah, my mom's been working from home, and she's 
I, she loves it. So, <laughs> dude, it's great. Once you work in your pajamas, like you can't go back. Yeah. I wake up in the morning. I, I work in my, I work in a pajama bottoms and a robe, and that's it. Like it's it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so Square Enix is saying here that um, the company will designate each employee as either home-based, uh, working an average of at least three days per week from home, or office-based, working an average of three days per week from the office. Um, division heads will designate some positions or individual employees as office-based, as dictated by the nature of the work involved. Yeah, So yeah, if you're doing work that doesn't really require you to even go to the office in the first place yeah um like you shouldn't really need to it's um yeah and i know a lot of like japanese companies like they really get down in the dirt because they want to like maximize profits but yeah you know you get they also get a lot of overtime hours and then that fucks them up so it's it's um and then, like a lot of them, don't report the numbers in the books when they're when they're doing overtime and shit like that. It's like real fucking bad shit, bad shit over there. So yeah, it's if, if it's this, fucking it's live to work over there for sure. <laughs> yeah, if this if this alleviates even like some of that, then that's that's positive. Yeah. So again, if that can trickle down and other businesses see this and you know reevaluate what they're doing, um, that that can only be a good thing. So yeah, I agree. Um, we also got a uh, news that Red Dead Online is coming standalone December first. Uh, the game is releasing December first. Um, on Xbox and PS4 and PC for five dollars. Um, that is uh seventy five percent on sale. So normally it'd be like twenty. But yeah, it's Red Dead Online standalone. So if you don't want to go out and buy the uh, go out and buy Red Dead uh, Red Dead Redemption two. To play the online, you can just buy the online to get into it. Which this is um this is weird. Yeah. Because they I figure they would have done that for GTA online. Is does that that doesn't have like a separate downloadable thing. It does not. Um they're I, they're probably testing the waters with it. They saw how successful GTA was. And you know, they're they you don't want to cannibalize your own business. You know, once you release another online game your first one's not gonna get as much attention yeah but i don't think that this is my opinion i don't think red dead has as much uh broad appeal as gta would yeah i agree and i'm just looking at as like a number crunching standard yeah you know they probably didn't do that because like gta online was their first like major online thing and it sold like crazy. So, you know, you have the question, you know, Red Dead Online is going to come out. Is it going to do as well or better than GTA? And is it going to take away attention from GTA once it comes out? So that's probably why they never, like, release a standalone GTA Online. Yeah. But now that Red Dead Online is doing really well, and they saw that, oh, people do like the online games we make. Now it makes sense to put resources into making a standalone game. I don't know how many resources go into cutting it off in the main game, but it must be quite a bit. It took them this long to do it. Yeah. And I haven't touched any of these online modes in like years, man. Um, I remember I I did put a good amount of time into GTA online when it was still hot and it was still new. But man, did that shit fucking suck, man. Like the, um, yeah, the load times specifically, uh, were just god fucking awful, and then like yeah. you'd sit through a load, and then the game would crash, and you're like, "Well, fuck, <laughs> reload all that shit again." And it was just like it was just a nightmare. Um, they gave everyone who managed to log in when it happened like a free million dollars and like a house or something. Yeah, I think I got that. I got <laughs> yeah, that. I got on that too. PS3. There were well, I I fucked up and like. I did all the exploits on PS3 and then transferred my character over and then like continue doing the exploits. And I think they caught on and they actually took your money. If you like, if they caught you, I think I heard about um, that. And yeah, because it fucking fucked up the game economy. So they were like, <laughs> yeah, fuck up the game economy. They're selling fucking shark cards. So yeah, who gives a fuck? Um, 
But, but yeah, that, that's the big thing with it. I mean, we'll see if it, if it does well. I mean, Rockstar, I like to believe Rockstar knows what they're doing. Like, they know how to make money. and They know how to make money, yes. <laughs> Do they know how to make... Uh, well, well, fuck it. They, they know how to make a good game. They just don't want to. <laughs> they know where their bread's buttered, so... Yeah, I mean, this is... If you look at, like, GTA, I mean, GTA 4 came out. It got, like, what, three expansions? GTA 4, GTA. like, has survived an entire generation. Uh, like, that's a PS3 game that is now got ported to PS4 and then ported to PS5. GTA 4? Did it really? GTA 5. GTA 5. Yeah. Like that spread but that I mean, spanned an entire generation with no with nothing in between, except Red yeah. Dead. But I'm like GTA. I'm talking specifically span an entire generation without a new game in between. Uh, Not just that, but like if you look at like when GTA Four came out, that got you know extra stories. You know, you had the Ballad of Gay Tony and the uh, the biker one. I can't remember yeah. know, those expansions to GTA Four. All the expansions for GTA Five have been online expansions multiplayer expansions and same with red dead with yeah. red dead one you got the base game and undead nightmare where is undead nightmare for red dead 2 or yeah like uh, i don't know it's frustrating it's frustrating to see like single player content being pushed aside for his multiplayer stuff i get it makes money but i'm not that type of player yeah so the uh, the new standalone version of Red Dead Online will require up to 123 gigabytes of disk space. Um, Jesus Christ! So, <laughs> uh, which I think is because like that whole like map is there, like it's pretty that's much true. The whole game. So that's true. Yeah, that's a thing. If you're really looking forward to that, I mean, really, who's looking forward to this who hasn't already like bought Red Dead? But whatever. Um, I bought Red Dead and have not touched that online mode whatsoever. Exactly. So, um, in other news, you have uh, the new Cuphead DLC, the Delicious Last Course, got delayed to 2021. Um, I forgot this. Is was that happening. the one that? Yeah, is that the one that added a new character? Or did that come out already? I don't remember this game getting any DLC, but I don't know. I remember there was like an expansion coming out that like added a new character, like like teacup girl or something. Oh, you're right. No, I think that might have been this. That might have been this. Yeah, which it it, it it sucks to see happen, but I mean, you know, with COVID, I'm not gonna shit on them for having to push that out. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's... like this this stuff happens. But I, I completely forgot about this <laughs> this DLC and this game entirely until they announced this de- this delay. Like I don't even, did they even have a date or anything? I I I don't I have not been following this at all. Uh but, um yeah. according to their Twitter post, uh they announced that it should be coming in twenty twenty one. They don't have a date yet. Yeah, well, you hate to see this type of thing happen, but yeah, that's that's where we're at now. So, yeah, most people are pretty positive. A lot of the uh, posts on Twitter are just like, "Take your time, don't worry about it. Take take the time to make it as good as it can be." Someone remade which is good it to see. The, <laughs> someone remade it in the style of CD Projekt Red. <laughs> I did see that. That was funny. Which CD Projekt Red, I can see why they get a lot of flack for it because they were like, "Yep, the game's done," and then they're like, "Just kidding." <laughs> yeah, so I can see why CD Projekt Red got a bunch of shit for it, but I don't know. We'll see what they. We'll see. I mean, if if it comes out, it'll be great. Uh, I have no light doubt in my mind they can release a pretty solid game. Um, and next is we got the Steam Autumn Sale. We just talked about uh, it's live until December first. So, you know, all of you listening, you got a couple days to go there, fill up that uh you know, fill out that wish list a little bit. Um, that's yeah. all on you guys. Go check that out. Uh, there's some pretty good games on sale right now. 
Yeah, there's an emphasis on adventure games and RPGs. Yeah. So if you've been if you've been dying on if you've been holding off on some RPG adventure stuff, then there you go. Um, and this week in trailers, we got the Cyberpunk 2077 PlayStation gameplay trailer, which I, I know you're kind of you kind of been whatever with it, but. The more I see, the more excited I get, dude. The game still looks pretty good on PS4 Pro. Um, doesn't look as good as the PC images we were getting, but it still looks pretty solid, man. This gameplay is from PS4? Uh, so it's PS4 Pro, I think, is the whole... And there's some PlayStation 5 by backwards compatibility. Uh, uh, I don't think any native PS5, though. They, hold on, man. Hold on. You're going to show yeah. this game. You're going to show gameplay of this game and you're just showing the PS4 version. Yep. A backwards compatible on a PS5, not even like the native version. Are you surprised that you not watch this trailer before you put it up? I didn't the... watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch it, man. I, I, don't, I don't like I said, I'm trying to avoid watching this stuff, but um, interesting, interesting. Um, Which, looking yeah. at, there is a noticeable improvement in performance on the PS5 by backwards compatibility, but I see what you're saying, man. Like, show me some fucking... You know, show me that that native game. I want to see what that looks like. Show me the experience I can only get if I buy your new system. Yeah. Exactly. Or show me the game in, in, in the best possible settings, you know? So, show I mean, me... PC, but... Yeah, PC ideally, but you know, if you're going to show me the console version, show me the, you know, the best version of that console version, not like yeah, here's it on a PS4 Pro. Or if you're going to show me the PS4 version, I would like to know how the I would you you either show me one of two things. You show me the best possible version or you show me the worst possible version. Like worst case scenario, I want to see a base PS4. If you're going to show me PS4, I want to know how it runs on the worst PS4. Um, I don't know. That's just me, I guess. But it it, it no, looks fine. I hear what you mean. It looks it looks good. Uh, there is a noticeable again increase in performance and graphical fidelity on the uh, backwards compatible PS5 version, but I, I'm more interested in what the PS5 native looks like. Whatever. Yeah. Um. We got a Hitman 3 location revealed. Uh, Hitman 3 is the dramatic conclusion of the World of Assassination trilogy. Um, I've never played Hitman. I know, blasphemy. You're fucking up. Well, I know it's I'm okay not up. to play those those old shitty games, but this the recent trilogy, the, new, the, the reboot. So is the new so reboot's good. good? It's yeah. so good, man. So good. That's why I'm excited for that James Bond game, because it's it's... If it's going to be this, but like James Bond shit, I'm like, yes, yes, baby. Um, um, it's coming out um, by IOI as a developer for Hitman. Um, it's taking place in China, which looks really cool. Like a very yeah. drabby, neon lit area of China, which looks cool. Um, I, I kind of want to check these games out now because you're not the first one to tell me that these new reboots are like really good. They're um, good, man. They're good. You know what? Is it on the Steam sale? Let's find out. Oh, uh, probably, yeah. They're cheap. They're cheap now, too, so... Um, yeah, the first game... The problem with the first game was that it came out episodic. So yeah, I remember that. Not a lot of people were fucking with it because uh, just how the wave was coming out, but... Uh, they, they, re they relaunched it with just, like, a complete edition. Yeah, I can get the Game of the Year edition for like eleven dollars and seventy five cents. Yeah. It includes the game, all the episodes, the extra DLC. Wow. I don't know. This or Outer Wilds. I'm gonna leave it to you. This or Outer Wilds. I you don't even have to ask, man. Like Outer <laughs> Wilds, obviously. <laughs> I'm just saying. This game these games are good. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll check out Outer Wilds first and get to that. Um, we also got a trailer for the medium. Uh, this is titled there the Threats official trailer. <clears throat> Excuse me. We talked about this a little bit. Um, uh, Bluebird, I don't Bluebird team. Yeah, they make yeah. good games. I uh, excited for this. Uh, you know, unfortunate this also got delayed. Um, yeah. You know, I think this is supposed to be a launch game. I th- I thought maybe it but... was supposed to be, but that that got changed. Um, it looks cool, man. Like I'm I'm interested in it. I can't wait to see it come out so I can hear more about it. Yeah. Um, we also got a trailer for the uh, Mortal Kombat movie skin pack. Which, if you're a fan of the '90s Mortal Kombat movie, these are costumes specifically based on those characters. There's, uh, we got a Sonya Blade costume, um, Raiden, Johnny Cage. I think like Scorpion has one too that they didn't show off on this trailer, but I might be wrong on that. Um, which th- th- these games take a lot of influence from the movies, believe it or not, because the guy who plays uh, Shang Tsung is actually the same actor from the Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah. And it's really cool to see them do that. Um, Honestly, I'm I'm you know how I feel about Mortal Kombat 11, dude. <laughs> With the new, uh, it's a standalone purchase for these uh, new costume packs. Which I want to remind everybody, there is an ultimate edition of Mortal Kombat that is not going to feature these costumes. So, how ultimate can it really be? Um, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Nether Realm they have this habit of like really just nickel and diming all of their fighting games for as long as they could until the next one comes out. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not a fan of that, this isn't a game for you. And by the time, you know, you get a version that has everything, it's one, it's not going to have everything first off. And second, you know, you're not going to have a, by that point, the new game's going to be out. So but here's my question. These, these outfits, they also come with the voice, the original voice actors as well. Um, yes, uh, that is one thing that's really cool about it, and that might make it worth it if you're a fan of the movie. But let's be honest, this movie's kind of suck, dude. <laughs> but you know what might be worth it? Does it does the Sonya voice replace Ronda Rousey? Uh for the combat, it would. <laughs> but not the for story like... lines. They're not for the story. The story's still gonna be shitty. Oh well, okay. See. Well, the story's good, but Ronda Rousey isn't. She's not an actor. Yeah. She's not an actor, dude. I don't fucking know why. They fucking had Ronda Rousey come to play Sonya Blade. There's no reason <laughs> to do that. Yeah. You had an established actor who played Sonya in your reboot series. Why fuck with that? By hiring someone. Did anyone learn anything from Dinklebot and Destiny? Like, let's be honest here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought he was okay. I, I don't know. He was awful. He like, was awful. Yeah, but if you're like a robot type thing, it, I don't know. There wasn't like a precedent for how those things were supposed to sound. So it was like, oh, yeah, you know, for like a robot AI type of thing, I guess it's fine. But uh, like, I didn't really expect him to like emote or do anything crazy. So I don't know. I thought it was all right. That wasn't of, of all the grievances of that game. That was like my least like I didn't really care about that. <laughs> I see what you mean. In comparison to all the other shit wrong with it. Yeah. That's like on the bottom of the list. Yeah. Um, but I mean, bringing Nolan North in to do the voice was a much better idea. It just sounds much better. Yeah. Even like the robot stuff, like he sounds better than, what's his name? Peter Dinklage. Whatever. Um, point is, fuck Mortal Kombat. Fuck Ronda <laughs> Rousey. <laughs> fuck Netherrealm for thinking it was a good idea. To put a MMA fighter into an actress role. Which has Ronda Rousey done any acting before Mortal Kombat? Let's be honest here. Someone wants to Google did. that for me. I think she did. Um, she wasn't something like minor roles, but I, I'm almost positive she was in something. Hold up. I'm looking it up. Filmography. She was in Expendables 3. Yeah. Uh, Furious 7. She played herself in Entourage. She was in the new Charlie's Angels movie in a cameo. And she had some TV spots, so that's about it. Yeah. Oh, fuck her. 
<laughs> she's a good fighter. As someone who like appreciates like martial arts, she's a good fighter. Kind of a bitch though, because she lost that one match. Who was it? She lost that one match, and she like cried about it for like a year. But uh, not a good actress at all. <laughs> Terrible actress. Um. Anyway, back on track. What were we talking about? Right. Fuck World Combat. <laughs> um. Jesus, I every time. Why do you put Mortal Kombat in here if you know I'm gonna shit on it? Because they keep you know doing I'm gonna get stuff. off track. I mean, one, it, it is a trap, but they also do just keep doing stuff. So, <laughs> uh, we did get a new DLC for uh, Soul Calibur Six. Uh, Huang is coming to Soul Calibur, which I'm I'm surprised he wasn't already in it. I forgot he wasn't in the game, especially since like he's like a staple Mortal Kombat character. Yeah, well, they killed off a lot of characters in the last game. Yeah. Um, and I guess this one's, like, bringing them back. I don't know what, the, like, the story is for this Yeah, shit. this one's, like, a retelling of the other games, isn't it? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I have not played this one. I kind of fell off of Soul Calibur, even though it's, like, my favorite fighting game franchise. Uh, they took out Talim, and she was my favorite, and then after that... Talim's back in this one. He looks like a Bloodborne character. Yeah, I, I think she's back, but... Yeah, they totally changed how he looks. Like, yeah, he's got like all this weird magic shit I've never seen before. Like, that's new. <laughs> it looks cool as hell, though. <laughs> like, I'll, I'm more excited for the the fighting style they use in character creation. The character creation in Silver Six is so good, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Fry, Fry in the chat said, "Hydrate, redeem to hydrate, do you hydrate." <laughs> All right, drinking some water. But no, Huang looks really cool. He does look like a Bloodborne character, but eh, I don't know. I kind of dig it. I dig the uh, the character design. I dig the uh, combat options he has now. Looks um, cool. I'm glad you're still uh, putting stuff out for this game. Yeah. I like Soul Calibur Six. I think it's a fun game. Yeah. Um, I do like it a lot. Uh, looks like that finishes up the season pass for season pass two. Uh, they introduced uh, Hilda, um, Hoamaru from from Samurai Showdown. God, I forgot her name. That like ninja girl with a parasol. She was in Soul Calibur three, I think. I can't remember. Shang Hua. No, 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 no. She had a parasol. She was like a Japanese oh. ninja samurai type of character. I can't remember her name, but she was in it along with uh, Huang. So that, that'll be cool to see that that season pass is done. Kind of excited if they release another season pass who their next guest, guest character will be because Sam Soul Calibur dude nails those guest characters. Yeah. Um, we also got Microsoft Flight Simulator is getting a United States World Update trailer. Uh, um, which I need to play. <laughs> I need to play this, but like yeah. the requirements are like. Uh, specifically, like the SSD requirements, I just don't have this at the storage space because yeah. they want they want to put everything on an SSD, and it's just not going to happen. Um, but this game is just absolutely gorgeous, man. Yeah, dude, and not just that, but this update specifically uh, completely improves um, resolution, uh, digital elevation resolution, uh, aerial textures. Um, they're making the game look better. On top of that, they're adding in more airports, uh, high fidelity points of interest to visit in the game. It's like, holy shit, dude. Like I look at the Grand Canyon, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> that looks yeah. crazy. Oh, like this game is this game is insane, dude. <laughs> like this is gonna be the new like benchmarker for P- for everyone getting a PC now. And like you know, this doesn't get any awards or get nominated for anything because I don't know. That's what I'm saying, dude. This game came out this year. How is nobody talking about it? This game came out on PC this year, man. How is they're gonna give it yeah. to Death Stranding? Fuck yourself. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we have Saga Frontier remastered. I never played Saga Frontier, man. Have you played Saga Frontier? Nope. It's before my time. Uh, but people were very are excited you? about this. I thought you were like way older than I am. Well, I am. Well, it, it's before my time, before I like got it. This is like Super Nintendo, right? I think. 
something like I that. Was, yeah, I wasn't into RPGs when I was a kid. I was, I was like, so like, I don't know, like the first RPG. I what was the first RPG I played? Might have been like Final Fantasy VIII, and I didn't even own that game. My friend Christian, <laughs> I would go to his house and play um, it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So like, I was not into RPGs. Um, oh. This game looks really cool, this remaster. It looks like they enhanced the graphics a little bit, um, added a speed-up option to speed through battles, um, new events, cutscenes, protagonists to play with. It's They put some work into this remaster, man. I'm impressed. Good for them. Yeah, people seem uh, to... Uh, yeah. It seems to be what people want. I don't know what people want out of this, but it seems to be it. So... <laughs> Um, like they, you know, they try to remaster shit like uh, like in Chrono Densetsu, Trigger remaster, Chrono Trigger, and uh, God, that was you know. dog shit. Remember that Chrono Trigger remaster? Fuck, dude. Yeah, I played it. It looked ugly as <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, oh um, my god, man. So you know, I you know, I, I I always I never know what people want out of these. So this see, they seem to be doing okay with this. Yeah, looks good. Uh, we got a trailer for Kronos Before the Ashes, which is a remake of Remnant from the Ashes. Uh, not a remake, sorry, a prequel. Uh, okay, so ashes. this, so, okay, so I, I have some knowledge of this. Okay, let's hear it. Um, this game is actually, it actually came out back in like 2016. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as a VR game. Yeah, this was a launch game for the Oculus. I played this on the, uh, on oculus yeah and uh it had some interesting mechanics to where um when you die your character actually ages and Mm -hmm. your age determines like the cap of your stats um like there's an age where it's like your peak like you peak in like your 30s or like your 40s or something where like that's where your your stats can hit max and then after that um your age like decreases your stats um it's it's a very interesting uh, mechanic uh like death mechanic to where you age where you every time you die um yeah and they were explaining that in the trailer too and they explained that even though your physical attributes diminish when you age your uh mental attributes like for magic and stuff that increases with your age yeah so that's yeah, something really like cool that to see. something like that um you know, it was okay in VR. It seems like they're putting a much larger emphasis on combat uh, in this version, which is looks pretty good. Um, very Dark Soulsy. Yeah, um, it looks really cool. My only complaint is, you know, I liked Remnant from the Ashes because it was like a shooter with Souls elements, and they're not having guns in this game. At least from what I saw in the trailer, it's all like swords and shields and stuff. Yeah. Well, this is a, di- this is a direct port of that VR game. Yeah. I have to say that. So I don't say direct port. They are making some changes to make it on yeah. VR more play like an actual game. Yeah. Cause the, it was more puzzle oriented with like light mm-hmm. combat. Uh, so. so it is cool to see that now. Um, we'll have to wait and see when it comes out. I like remnant and it looks like, if they focus more on like the action hack and slash parts of it and less on the souls parts of it, I might like it a little bit more, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, we got, I actually saw this before you put it up on the, uh, on the chat here, but monster hunter world is getting a crossover, which the monster hunter movie. Yeah. That piece of shit. Um, <laughs> So, those of you who don't know, the Monster Hunter World uh, crossovers are like a story, have a story to them. It's not like, oh, here's some random monsters and some random crossover characters. No, like there's actually a story telling like what started the crossover and what you have to do to like solve it. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is interesting to see that. Here's what, here's what I don't like about this her armor is so fucking basic in this game. When you have, it looks like basic starter gear Monster Hunter armor, which is the point. That's what she looks like in the in the movie. But that's not as appealing as like, you know, dressing up like Bayek from Assassin's Creed. It's not as iconic as wearing Dante's jacket from Devil May Cry or uh, Geralt's armor from The Witcher or looking like Siri from The Witcher. 
No, yeah. here's Mila Jovovich in basic Monster Hunter armor with basic Monster Hunter dual blades. Do you get to be Mila Jovovich though? Do you get like the hair? Do you get like the the face? Yeah, um, when they do that, it's like a full conversion like costume. Okay, okay. And in fact, in the original Witcher ex- crossover, you actually played as Geralt for most of the uh, crossover. Oh, okay. Like the game took away your armor, weapons, and you played as Geralt. And you actually like walked around, you looked around the map, and you had like those Witcher moments where you like examined something like, mm, there was something here. It was an ugly creature. It looks like it took off this way. It's actually, it was actually pretty cool. I'm surprised at the work they put into that. And they even changed camera angles so it looked like the Witcher investigations. It was really neat. I was impressed with that. Um, so maybe they might do something cool like that with the Monster Hunter movie crossover, but we'll see. Um, that movie I'm definitely going to watch. The movie has guns in it, but they kind of realized in the trailer, hey, guns don't work. They realized in the trailer, tanks don't work. So maybe like that'll stick to the Monster Hunter I know, but we'll see. Um, I'm gonna watch it anyway, so I can talk shit about it. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> if it surprises me, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. If it surprises me, I'll I'll be honest. When's that movie coming out? Is that like soon? I think it's like next year, like early next year. Oh shit. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, it's interesting it uh, that like. Because you know that Capcom had to sign off on the movie. I mean, of course. But it's interesting just to see them embrace it. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, December 3rd this year is when it's coming out. <laughs> okay, so next week. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll surprise me. But we'll see. Um, we got a trailer for Gal Gun Returns. Yes. It's got both the opening movie and a release date. I have not played any of these Gal Gun games. <laughs> wow. You're 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 missing out. <laughs> Dude, if I want to play a porn game, I got a bunch of options. Just saying. Dude, it's much more than that, dude. Is you, it really? You can, you can rub Is it really? You can rub uh you can rub the girls. You sound like a fucking pervert right now, but continue. <laughs> There's a lot of rubbing involved. Uh, and, you know, you shoot until you hit ecstasy. It's great. You can do that at home. <laughs> but no. Um, <laughs> all jokes aside, uh, it does look, from what I've seen of the other Galgan games, they do look like really interesting, like, rail shooters. Um, I mean, it's all in good fun, man. Joking aside, it's all in good fun. Like, <laughs> And isn't at the end of the day... Isn't that what video games should be? Just stupid fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> I gotta ask though, can you play this game one handed? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> uh I I mean, uh yeah, you can. <laughs> so beautiful. Um that is it for trailers. Uh we got some releases, man, December first. We got Kronos Before the Ashes coming out. Uh, it's coming on everything. PC, Switch, PS4, Xbox One, Stadia. So have fun. Uh, we also have Empire of Sin coming out on PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Which is like a mobile gangster game. So that's cool. That's what you're into. The gangster uh, we got... XCOM. Yeah. Um, it looks interesting, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I've been burnt out by those like XCOM like imitators. Uh, we got Frostpoint VR Proving Grounds coming out. Uh, the um, we got some gameplay already from the open beta they released, but it's officially coming out on uh, Rift, Index, and Vive as of December first. Um, it looks interesting. It's like a VR battle royale game. Yeah, it looks interesting. Um. I don't know if it quite sells me. Like, it's not like, oh, I gotta buy a VR so I can play Frostpoint. Like, <laughs> mm, I'm not getting that vibe from it. But it does look really interesting. And, dude, anytime there's a new VR game, I'm ex- I do think VR could be like the next like big leap in gaming. It just we need to see what devs do with it. I think Half Life Alex has come the closest to being that killer app, but we yeah. haven't gotten that killer app quite yet. Yeah. Um, then we have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is coming out PS5 and Xbox Series X. So, I mean, if that's your thing, man, 
There you go. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it. It's Rainbow Six Siege. The game's been out for a while now. <laughs> it's gone through a lot of changes, a lot of major updates. So go check it out, man, if you absolutely have to play Rainbow Six Siege. Um, we have a trailer for... We have Twin Mirror coming out that same day as well. Um, I've seen is... trailers to it. Yeah, it's like a point-click adventure game, right? It's a, uh, it's a don't nod joint. Yeah, I think. So one click adventure. And uh, <laughs> this game's gotten no play, dude. I mean, you would not, you you would be forgiven for not knowing what the fuck this game is because they've been, the trailers for this game are like years old. Yeah, and, this this uh, gameplay trailer specifically was like October 2018, and the game comes out in like three four days. And like no one saw, it. there's no new trailers for it to like announce yeah. that hey, it's coming out. There's nothing, so. I, this is going to fall into obscurity. I don't know why this yeah. isn't getting pushed, but yeah. We'll see. So. <laughs> um, we got Worms Rumble coming out December 1st as well. Uh, that is going to be free on PlayStation Plus, so if you have it, go check it out, download it. Then December 2nd, we have Sam and Max Save the World Remastered coming out on PC and Switch. Yeah, I never played Sam and Max. Everyone tells me Sam and Max is good. Save the World is, I uh, guess, a lot of attention from Sam and Max fans. So apparently that's the one that they should be remaking, and that's the one that they they are remaking. Um, this isn't the older like two D Sam and Max games though, right? Like this was like the uh, this was like that uh that that three D one that Telltale Games did, right? Yeah, well I think Telltale did all of them, right? I don't fucking know, dude. I don't, I don't know Sam and Max. <laughs> Um, uh, it's the remaster being developed by you said it's pronounced Skunkape. <laughs> yeah, Skunkape. That is hilarious. Um, yeah, I remember now. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. I want to check it out because the humor like sounds right up my alley. Yeah, good games. Um, yeah, everyone keeps telling me. I'll definitely check them out uh, once that comes out. But we'll see, man. Um, we also got oh, this is a long fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have Shirin the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate coming out on PC and Nintendo Switch. Those of you who don't know, oh, I never heard of this game. There's a reason for that. It came out on the Vita <laughs> back in, yeah. like, 2016. Shouts out to the Vita. It must um, be a porn game, then. <laughs> that's all that's um, going out. I have no idea anything about this game. <laughs> um, it's probably, if I had to guess, it's probably a turn-based RPG. Let me see. I'm watching um, my trailer now. It's a turn oh, it's a dungeon crawler. Yeah, dungeon crawler. I was going to say, it almost looked a little bit like... Um, Mystery the, Dungeon? Uh, no. It, uh, well, like at, at first, it looked like the... Uh, fuck, what's that... Uh, that Japanese game with like the the boy and like the uncle. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about, man. Never mind. But it looks like that SNES game. Um, this game actually looks pretty interesting. That I'm watching gameplay of it. This actually looks like it might be pretty cool. Looks alright. Um, yeah. Yeah, the remaster for that. I say remaster to port. If anything, uh, that is set to come out December second. Check it out, man. PC and Switch. Might be a good Switch game. You know, it's a perfect game to play on the go. Yeah. Uh, then December 3rd, we have Absolute Drift coming out Nintendo Switch. Um, I've never heard of this game before, but yeah, I've never That's, heard of this game it's before. It's been, been on PC for a while. It's just like, yeah. a, it's like a lo-fi drifting game, like pastel colors and like low-res textures. Real cool. Looks interesting. Um, then we have a uh, Haven coming out on God everything PC, PS4, Xbox yeah. One. So Haven uh, is by um, if you ever played Fury, um, these are those guys. Yeah, the same guys. That's cool. Yeah, and I played this. I played this during the uh, the our demo derby. Uh, one of them. I think it was a Tokyo Game Show one. Uh, soundtrack slaps as expected from the Fury guys. Uh, 
great soundtrack. You're like um you're like skating around. Um I'm not totally sure what all the gameplay is, but there's a lot of skating involved. So Yeah, it looks really interesting. It looks like you got yourself like two characters you can play as like a couple looks like. Yeah. Um it looks interesting. It's like a survival game with this weird skating mechanic. And it looks like a big part of it's the relationship between those two. Um, if you look deeper into the trailer, about a minute and a half in, the gameplay, or about two minutes in, the gameplay is like a turn-based RPG almost. But it kind of reminds me of like a Valkyrie profile mixed with like Paper Mario, which looks awesome. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm into this. I'm really into this. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm done adding that to my list, man. Uh, we also have Immortals Phoenix Rising coming out on everything. Windows, yes. Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Stadia. Um, we talked about this quite a bit on the podcast, man. If, you, if you're into it, it looks like it. Uh, it's definitely a Breath of the Wild-inspired game with uh, Greek god elements. It looks cool. It looks cool. Um, I like to see games imitating Breath of the Wild. That excites me. Uh, so it'll be cool to see that come out and to be a thing, man. Um, and more interesting news, we have Pogs coming out on PS4. <laughs> um, this game looks fucking ridiculous. It reminds me <laughs> of Nobi Nobi Boy, but like, what if like it was an actual game? This game cracks me up. Yeah. Like, this looks hilarious. I'm into it. Stupid games like that do make me laugh, and that game definitely makes me laugh. Yeah. Um, we also have Wildfire coming out that same day. Um, again, that one is coming out for Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Uh, Wildfire is... I don't really know what this game is. I've never seen this before. It's like a action game, puzzle game. Yeah, it looks like an action platformer of some type. I mean, the only thing um, I'm seeing is this gameplay video, but it looks like a puzzle action platformer game. Yeah. Where you use fire on, to like... It's been on a PC for a while, I think. Yeah. So that'll be cool to see. Um, looks like a nice Switch game to play. Uh, we also have December 4th, we have uh, some new games. Dark Complete Edition. Spelt with D A R Q. Uh, this game is like a side scroller, point and click puzzle game almost. Yeah, it's like a um, um, like an inside or a. Uh... Yeah, um, it's marketed as a zero gravity psychological horror game, but it looks like, like you said, like inside with more puzzle elements. Um, it looks interesting. It definitely looks it looks like a double fine game. I'm surprised there's no double fine attached to this. <laughs> like, am I wrong? Does that look it looks like a yeah, double uh, fine double game? Double fine right? has higher standards than this. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, um and some other related news. We have Dragon Quest Eleven Defini- Dragon Quest Eleven S Definitive Edition finally coming out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One December 4th. Um, I have talked this game to death. It is a really fun Japanese RPG. Uh, the Definitive Edition adds more um, story elements, uh, more costumes, more locations to visit. Um, plus, the soundtrack is actually composed. It's not using that garbage MIDI soundtrack the game released on here in the States. Uh, go check it out, man. It's coming out for everything December 4th. If you have Xbox Game Pass, it'll be available on Game Pass day one. It comes highly, highly, highly recommended from me. I like it. It's coming from someone who's never played Dragon Quest before Dragon Quest XI. Go check it out, especially if you like Japanese RPGs. Um, we also have Commandos 2 HD coming out on the Switch December 4th. I've never played a Commandos game before, man. Have you? Nope. Yeah, me neither. Um, so that's coming out. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a lot to say about it. I don't RTS know anything games, about this game. So. Yeah, RTS game. That's why I don't know about it. We have FIFA 21 coming out on PS5, Xbox Series X. 
that's it. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what can I say about FIFA, man? It's FIFA. Not a damn thing. <laughs> exactly. We have Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, which is the first Fire Emblem game never been released in the States. It's finally getting a stateside release that day. Um, it's coming out on the Nintendo Switch, priced at $5. Um, those of you who don't know this game, there's a reason for that. Again, it never came out here in the States. This is actually the game that Marth came from. So if you main Marth and Smash Brothers, you have this game to thank for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's cool that it's coming out, man. That's just it. I thought we'd never see this game. Um, I prefer they did a remake instead of just porting it over in English, but whatever. <laughs> eh, it's probably more work than it's worth. Like, the amount of people who... Eh, then again, Fire Emblem is pretty big nowadays, so... I would say if they remade that game with modern Fire Emblem elements, I think it could be uh, it could get the attention that people want, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, hopefully this brings enough attention. They maybe revisit that time period in Fire Emblem, but we'll see. I'm not a Fire Emblem fan, so I'm just talking out my ass right now. Um, we have Fitness Boxing 2, Rhythm and Exercise coming out as well. Um, those of you who never played Fitness Boxing, it's like a rhythm-based like workout game. Um... It got a lot of good reviews when it came out, man. It came out on the Switch, uh, I think, like, 2018, around the end of 2018, early 2019. Um, It got a lot of positive reviews for the fact that it is a fun exercise gaming video game. Um, Right now, if you want a good game to work out from home with, fitness boxing, I think, is it. And there's that uh, Switch Ring Fit Adventure, but good luck getting a copy of that. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it. Just it looks cool. I'm happy that that game's coming out. Um, it's yeah. selling game glasters for Nintendo, man. Good, good ways um, to stay fit during the end yeah. of quarantine. So exactly. My it wife feels like a dating sim. <laughs> yeah, like... so that's that's a weird thing. Um, my wife has been looking for a uh, game to get fit at home. I bought her Just Dance 2020, and she played that for like an afternoon and stopped playing it. <laughs> So maybe I can get pick this up for her, and she might she might get into it, but we'll see. Yeah, you need to gamify uh, we also have, it a little. Yeah, I think we have a John Wick Hex coming out as well that same day. Those of you who don't know is a uh, like a strategy stealth game almost. Yeah, it's a uh, Mike Bithel joint. So yeah, um, it looks interesting. I mean, I would have thought. I would have thought a game, what a movie like John Wick, if it was going to get a game, it would have been like an action third person shooter. But this makes sense too, because, you know, he does all this crazy shit, you know, throwing people into each other, throwing people into things, like stabbing them, shooting them. So it's cool that you have this like action strategy game to kind of play that out on a turn based system. Yeah. Um, I've seen the gameplay for it. it. It captures that John Wick energy in a turn based system really well. And I'm excited to see that happen. Um, we also have Madden 2021 coming out that same day for PS5 and Xbox Series X. I mean, is there really anything to say about that game? Excitement. Everyone loves it. Now, this next one. This is a game we've talked about a while before. It reminds me of Tony Hawk Downhill Jam or like SSX, but more ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Tanuki Sunset Freestyle. <laughs> You play as like a raccoon, Tanuki, uh, going down, um, going downhill on a longboard. It looks fucking ridiculous, and I yeah. love it for that. <laughs> I love it for that. I love it, dude. I love it, dude. This looks fun. That's hilarious. So... This looks like a lot of fun. Um, what happened to that other game that was coming out on the Switch? Skatebirds? That skateboarding bird game? Remember that? Um... There are a lot of these coming out, man. I played one that was um you were a you were some sort of animal on a jet ski uh and you would jump off ramps and like flip it like a board. But then you also had a gun. <laughs> and then you, I you, love you could, that. You could shoot shit while doing I flips and that. shit. Um yeah. I forgot what that you one know, was. I've called, said it though. before. I've said it before, I'll say it again, man. Games games need to be fun at their core. Like That's why we play them, because they're fun. And yeah. this game, it looks like it's just trying to be a fun game, and I, I love it for that. 
Tanuki Sunset. Check it out, man. <laughs> That's coming out December 4th on PC, and I'm excited. Yeah. I definitely want to learn more about this game. It looks fun as hell. <laughs> Um, I think that's it for the show, man. Um, anything else you want to add or share? Uh, no, that's uh, yeah, that's gonna do it here. Awesome. So, um, yeah, I <laughs> I finished uh, I finished uh, Bug Snacks, so now I got to find something else to play. Um, so I kind of don't know what to play now. <laughs> Um, hey, I can't think of anything. Go play Borderlands. Finish that up. No, no, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking something good. I don't know. I, I was thinking maybe going <laughs> back to something like uh, I need to finish um Red Dead. There you go. So I was thinking going back to that. I don't know. There you go. We some leave some suggestions in the box. Uh. Of uh, what what games I should play? Um, Gameverse, Gameverse dot com, Gameverse dot com slash yeah Twitch, Gameverse dot com slash YouTube, Gameverse dot com slash Discord, Gameverse dot com slash Extra Life. We're uh, it's still going, still going till the end of the year. So, Extra Life, uh, Gameverse dot com slash Nugget Extra Life is our uh, Canadian representative. Uh, holding it down for us again this year, so uh, show uh, show her some love for the, yeah. uh, for the kids again till the end of the year. So, but um, thank you, thank you for having me again. This is fun. I look forward to yeah. this every week. Yeah, and um, yeah, thank you everyone for stopping by. Thanks for listening. Good night, everybody. <laughs>